CBC Online Church, Pastor Ed Newton coming from our main campus here in San Antonio, Texas. And wherever you're watching from, know it's our great honor to have you a part of the journey. We're in our series called Resolution, and today we talk about servant leadership. No greater example than Jesus. And today as we talk about the towel and the significance of it and the purpose in our life, may you today be encouraged that the only leader there is is a servant leader. Till we meet again, much love. We're grateful that you're in the house. You're more than a face in the crowd here. Your family here, and we're honored that you would be here today. 1145, singing strong and loud today. Loud and proud that Jesus is on the throne. Thank you so much for being willing to lift your voice and also engage in this missional opportunity. You received a listener guide, and you also received a brochure that says Live Local. Would you take out that brochure that says Live Local? On the inside of that, Next weekend, that is next Saturday between 8.30 and noon, we are seeking to mobilize several thousand people to serve our city. We're talking about servant leadership today, and we felt as if it would be so important for us to practice what we're preaching. And that is next weekend, there are various opportunities to serve our eight schools that we've selected. We're in partnership with all across our city, not just north side schools, but south side, east side, west side schools as well. Also, serving alongside of Children's Hunger Fund that is packing boxes that would serve as food and meals for families that find themselves in distress and then also even serving at a very practical level in some of our city parks, seeking to beautify some places so that somehow, some way that a group of people that work for our city would know that we're a church that doesn't have a mentality of y'all come here, but instead we'll go there. And that's the kind of church that we seek to be. Come on, can we clap to that? Would that be all right? That's the kind of church we seek to be. So you may be asking the question, Pastor Ed, so we just show up wherever we want to show up on this particular brochure. Well, first of all, register. That is, you could go to the website, livelocal.cbc.global, and then you could just sign up. It's free. But we need to know you're coming. Here's the reason why, because we got to make sure we have tools and supplies for you to be able to use when you come to these particular locations. For some of you that would say, Pastor Ed, I can't even make that because of a previous commitment. Many of you are serving in the city. Just hashtag it. That is specifically, you'll see that in the brochure. Hashtag what you're doing so we could celebrate all that God is doing through this church as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Speaking of being the hands and feet of Jesus, this is servant leadership, and we're talking about that today. So if you got a Bible, John 13 is going to be our focus passage. We've been in this series called Resolution. We kicked off the new year with a series called Resolution, a life in focus, you being uniquely you. Nobody's got your voice print. Nobody's got your thumb print. And here's the tagline that I borrowed from my father in the faith, Danny Sinkfield. He said these words, don't try to prove yourself, just be yourself. Be all that God's called you to be. And so today, we talk about servant leadership. Now, the scene shifts. That is, the bookcase for us has served as a visual for every single one of us of a future picture of us. All our goals, dreams, aspirations obtained and boxes checked. Therefore, those goals and dreams and resolutions have now been replaced with leadership principles such as the power of 1%, the mirror was self-awareness, the marbles was, that is, that every day counts. Life is like a vapor, here for a moment, then gone. And so as we seek to make much of today, we want to be better today than yesterday. And then we talked about how to deal with failure. That is, as we talk about failure... That is, a righteous man and a righteous woman falls down seven times but gets back up again. Failure is not falling. Failure is choosing not to get up again. But I'm looking into the faces of some men and women right now that understand that our failure, as a great author said, our failure is not a tattoo. It's just a bruise. And bruises will heal. And that label of rejection and failure is not your label because the blood of Jesus won't let it stick to you because you're a son and daughter of God. Come on, can we clap to that today? Would that be all right? Come on, I'm going to get to preaching in just a moment. But in John chapter 13, we talk about servant leadership and Jesus is the greatest definer of servant leadership. He gets to the end of his life. He's about to go to the cross and he's having a meal with his boys called the disciples and he grabs a basin of water and wraps a towel around his waist, and he begins to serve. And this is the target statement. The quickest way to the top is to serve from the bottom. The quickest way to the top is to serve from the bottom. It's a paradigm shift. That is, if you want to be great, Jesus says you got to be least. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and give my life a ransom 
for many. I was speaking in a town called Wiley, Texas, just north of Dallas. I was speaking at a student conference and had the opportunity of staying the night, and so that required a hotel stay, and I stayed at a Holiday Inn. Praise God for those Cinnabons. If you've ever been to Holiday Inn, they, they're known for those cinnamon rolls. But I move into this space for the evening, and it's brand new. My accountability partner is my 14-year-old eighth grade daughter named Liv. I try not to ever travel alone, and so my daughter is my accountability partner. And we walk into this place, and I said, Liv, this is a brand new place. Smells new, looks new. Everybody's on point in customer service. Servant leadership is at an all-time high. We're waiting for our room, and I'm checking out the place. I go check out the workout facility. They got brand new treadmills. And I was like, hey, Liv, I got to use the restroom real quick. And so I walk into the bathroom, and I have this moment. Come on, this is TMI, too much information. But you know how this works, church. So I'm looking at the toilet. (laughs) And I'm like, this is servant leadership at the next level. Somebody has already put toilet paper down on the seat. (laughs) Don't act like you don't do that, right? (laughs) You're not going to sit down on that seat. And so somebody put toilet paper. I'm not talking about the one-ply toilet paper apparatus thing that you just pull off the wall and lay it down and punch a hole through it. I'm not talking about that deal. I'm talking about somebody... Square one, square two, square three, square four, square five, square six. I mean, they decorated the tree. That's what they did, right? They decorated. And I'm just like, this is servant leadership at the next level. So I get home, and my wife goes, Ed, tell me about the trip. I said, well, listen, 22 kids gave their life to Jesus. It was amazing. I said, but you got to hear about this Holiday Inn. And I went on to tell the story that I told you, and she asked the question. She had this question in her soul. She goes, did you sit down on that toilet paper? I said, well, I I said, what you need to know is I was just (laughs) impressed by the fact that somebody in leadership trying to be a servant leader just put toilet paper on the toilet seat for the next client in the toilet. And all of a sudden, she goes, Ed, you you understand something, right? Like, Holiday Inn didn't do that. The dude before you didn't flush his toilet paper and left it. That ain't serving leadership. And then she asks the question. She goes, so answer the question. Did you sit down? I said, I'm going to leave that to your imagination. But I did not sit down, but it led me to this thought that sometimes, <laughs> see, I, I worked that in there. I didn't sit down, but I, I literally was going to take a picture for you. And I thought, well, that'll just be too much. You know, you came to church and the pastor's talking about decorating the tree on the toilet, all right? And so, but what you need to know is that servant leadership is thoughtfulness. It's thoughtfulness. Now, that awkward illustration I just share with you just As we define leadership, leadership is, yes, to be in charge of some things. But when you're a servant leader, it's thoughtfulness in the position that you've been given for the greater good, not just of you, but the people that come behind you. And so as we talk about leadership, Jesus would model leadership the moment he wrapped a towel around his waist and began to wash the feet of his disciples. And I want to talk to you about the towel. That's okay. So all the points we we'll have the word towel attached to it. There's going to be some principles in the gray box I'd love for you to write down. But point number one, write this down. I want you to see the picture of the towel. The picture of the towel. And the picture of the, of the towel, here's what it does. It displays humanity. Humanity of what? Jesus. Think about it. In verse 3, the Bible says the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. That's a very significant statement. You know what Jesus was saying to those disciples in the upper room? He's like, hey, fellas, listen up. I'm about to die. No worries. I'm coming back from the dead. And at that moment, he says these words. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. I came from God. I'm going back to God. That is the ultimate definition of I'm in charge. I'm in charge of the universe. He says that. And then the next verse, don't miss this. He says, I'm in charge. Like I'm large and in charge. And at that moment... The Bible says he laid 
aside his outer garment, which would have been his rabbinical garment, which is a statement of authority. He lays that down. He lays down his title and he picks up a towel. Oh, come on. Laid down his title, picked up a towel. And what was he saying in that moment? Here's the principle. Servant leadership is leveraging, here's the gray box, your position to make others feel prominent. Laying down your position to make others feel prominent. Let me see if I can illustrate this while you're filling in that gray box. There's a story of a corporal that's sitting on a horse barking orders at his soldiers. Their mission is to repair a defensive mechanism known as a barrier. But these men overworked. There's only a few of them. Hours they were laboring. The corporal's barking orders. A civilian comes by on another horse, says to the corporal, what's going on? He says, we're trying to repair this defensive barrier. And at that moment, the civilian asked the corporal, sitting on a horse, barking orders at his soldiers. He said, corporal, why are you not getting off your horse and helping the men? He said this, wrong answer, by the way. He goes, because I'm a corporal. As to say, I'm in charge. I don't do stuff like that. So the civilian got off the horse, began to help the soldiers accomplish the task. And all of a sudden, the civilian gets back up on the horse and says to the corporal, he, says, so he said, corporal, next time you're not able to have enough men to fulfill the assignment, call the commander in chief, and then in quotations, don't miss this, he goes, and I'll be here. He had no idea he was talking to George Washington. The president had no idea. But what was the president saying to the corporal? You never let your title or your position get in the way of you accomplishing something. Because if, watch this, if serving is too big for you, then you are too small to lead. You're too small to lead. Now, that's not an original quote by me. I definitely borrowed that, but I'll. I will definitely fire that bullet today. And when you and I think about that statement, that statement for all of us, Jesus, large and in charge, not too big to serve. Our bigness in regards to the authority or the position or the influence that we have is not for the greater good of us, but for the greater good of those around us. And that is the impressionable moment that servant leaders have had on all of us. But point number two, write this down. Not only do we see the picture of the towel. Number two, we see the placement of the towel. The placement of the towel. Not only does the towel display humanity, that is, it's not your title, it's your testimony, but it demonstrates humility. Demonstrates humility. That's the green box there. Now, when we talk about humility, humility, C.S. Lewis said it best, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but humility is thinking of yourself less. It's being thoughtful. Servant leadership is being thoughtful. Now, you know the significance of a bib. A bib communicates without words ever being said, I need you to do something for me. Now, when my kids were little, we got four teenagers, but when they were little, we put bibs on our kids constantly because there was an ungodly amount of drool that kept coming out of their mouth. It was like a scene from Turner and Hooch. It was like that moment of like, where is this drool coming from? And his teeth and them going through the process of chewing and slobbering outfits being changed over and over. So we thought it's a whole lot easier to put a bib on them to try to protect their clothing. Now, I want to leave the bib on for just a moment. The 10 o'clock service, I accidentally left the bib on for about 15 minutes and got down, I literally began to try to fill in another blank, and I saw out of my peripheral vision the blue, like, and folks were like, did you mean to leave that on? I was like, no, but if you can't laugh at yourself, that's why I'm here. I'm here for your entertainment. <laughs> so if I accidentally leave this on, would you just remind me, hello, Pastor Ed, the bib, take off the bib. But here's what you need to know. The bib serves in contrast to the apron. So we talk about an apron. What you need to know is that the apron in a bib do the same thing, do they not? That is, they actually have the same purpose. Both of them have the purpose that is to wrap around your neck or waist, but what's the difference between a bib and an apron? Same material, same purpose, what's the difference? It's placement. 18 inches separates, watch this, bib mentality, 
do something for me. Apron mentality, let me do something for you. 18 inches. How do we get that mindset? Well, we look to the example of Jesus. And this is the principle. Write this down. Servant leadership is about posture, not about power. It's about posture, not about power. You say, Ed, what do you mean by posture? It's an attitude of the heart. It's an attitude of the heart. Jesus began to wash the stinky feet of the disciples. I don't know about you, but feet freak me out. (laughs) My own feet freak me out. I look down at my feet and listen, for those of you in the room, I I respect what you wear in regards to your shoes. But I am not the dude that wears flip-flops out in public. I don't wear mandals. I don't do any of that stuff. I can't look at my own feet. Only time I wear flip-flops is when I'm by the pool or I'm at the house where it's just me and my family that respect the fact that my feet look like Fred Flintstone's feet, right? (laughs) My feet look like a busted can of biscuits. I'm missing toenails because I'm a marathon runner. It's gross. I'm just telling you, I got feet that nobody want to look at. And so, like, for me, there's these moments where my wife's like, Ed, let's go get a Manny and a Petty. No, thank you. I mean, I should be getting a discount on the petty because I only got like nine toenails, right? So, (laughs) but that whole idea, by the way, that was for free. I didn't say that in any other service, right? 1145, you're special. Thank y'all for laughing at that, by the way. I thought, wow, I don't know if that's going to go out really well, but it did. Thank you for laughing at that. Makes it to the 121 service, all right? (laughs) So when we talk about, that is... The attitude and the posture of our heart, that is the principle, that is leadership. Servant leadership is about posture, not about power. Jesus washes feet, not just just feet of his disciples. The context, and I just want to maybe use my sanctified imagination for just a moment. Jesus walking into an upper room, most likely would have had a servant there. All those kind of rooms, when you rent out a room, would have had a servant that came with the room that has one job, wash the feet of people that come into it. There are no closed toe shoes, no socks, not only that, but you combine that with dirty, dusty roads, no underground sewage. This is disgusting. And 12 dudes, this smells like a middle school boys locker room, just dirty feet. Jesus possibly sent the servant home. My Jesus probably did stuff like this. He probably paid that dude and said, listen, I'm going to pay you for a job you don't have to do because I'm going to do your job and sends him home. And then Jesus begins to wash his disciples' feet. He gets to Simon Peter, and Simon Peter, and I love this, and I'm just going to use him in proper English because Simon Peter probably rolled like that. He looked at Jesus and was like, you ain't washing my feet. And then Jesus all of a sudden had a a mic drop moment, looked at him and said, then you got no part with me. And then Simon Peter was like, then wash all of me. Like, get all of me. And then Jesus, using this idea of spirituality and cleansing says, all I got to do is wash your feet. What he was saying is this, by my love for you and my service towards you, the reason why I came is not to be served, but to serve and give my life a ransom for many. And by the fact that I would serve you, I die for you and forgive you and wash away all your sin. Now watch this church. We serve not to be saved, but because we're saved, we serve. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples that I wash your feet because you have a relationship with me. And that's what he's trying to teach him, which leads to point number three. Write this down. We see the priority of the towel. Not just the picture of the towel, not just the placement of the towel, but the priority of the towel. Now, these green boxes are moving us towards a mindset. It displays humanity, demonstrates humility, delivers honesty, delivers honesty. By the fact that we serve, we're never more like Jesus until we serve. Max Ocato is a hero of the faith for me. He was dear friends with Pastor Robert, that is our pastor and founder of this church. We've only had two pastors in 30 years, and Pastor Robert served 25, and here I am at year four, and so we're moving towards our 30th birthday as a church, and I'm grateful to be in this position But I'm so thankful that Pastor Robert and Pastor Max were friends. And Pastor Max reached out to me. And I'll never forget the moment that Pastor Max Lucado texted me. I was like a middle school girl at a Justin Bieber concert. I lost my mind. I was like, Stephanie, Max Lucado just texted me. And he wants to meet. 
And I'll never forget, Pastor Max came over to our office, and I was trying to persuade Pastor Max, let's meet at a restaurant. And I was like, man, I got to impress this dude. Our offices are in portables. And I was like, hey, I mean, the, the most well-known Christian author in the world. Like, I don't want him to have to come out to a portable, but that's because we don't have a whole lot of space here, which, by the way, is one of the greatest testimonies of our church that we don't have space. And some of our offices are in portables. And so all of a sudden, Pastor Max is like, no, I want to meet at your office. And so he walks in our portable, sits down at the table, and he says, Ed, I just want to hear how things are going. And I'm just bearing my soul. I'm like, man, I, I'm, I'm just blown away by the privilege and to have you here today. So I'm just gushing, you know, just trying to encourage him. I've read all your books. I've listened to all your sermons. And the fact that I'm sitting with Max Okada right now in this moment, I'm losing my ever-loving mind. I'm trying to act like I got it all together. But on the inside, I'm doing black backflips and cartwheels. I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm honored to be with you. And then in this moment, he says, Ed, could I pray for you? I go, I would love for you to pray for me, Pastor Max. And so I kind of bow at the table. And all of a sudden, I hear the chair back up. And he backs the chair up. And so I kind of peek. And all of a sudden, I watch him get down on his knees. And he puts his hands on my feet and begins to pray out loud over me. Tears flowing down his face, praying prayers like, Jesus, I pray for this young pastor. Would you anoint him? Would you bless him? He's a modern-day Joseph. And I just went, oh, God. Can I tell you what that did to me? I've read his books. I've listened to his sermons. But that was the greatest sermon and book I ever read in my entire life by Max Locato was the moment he humbled himself and put his hands on my, my feet. If anybody should be on his knees and hands on someone else's feet, I should be doing that to Max Locato. But what was he doing? He was modeling what Jesus does, which causes me to go, I want to be that kind of leader that would find myself pushing back the chair and getting on my knees and serving people because when we understand the model of Jesus, we understand, and this is point number three, the priority of the towel. It delivers honesty. But here's the principle. Write this down. Servant leadership is choosing to practice what you prefer. Practice what you prefer. All of us in this room love to be honored. All of us in this room love to be encouraged. All of us in this room consider it humbling to be served by someone else. So if we love those things, then we should reciprocate those things. And one of the greatest examples outside of what I just shared with you of Jesus and Max Locato is the founder of Wendy's. His name is Famous Dave. They call him Uncle Dave when they work for Wendy's. In the manager's office, there is a picture of Famous Dave holding a mop bucket. That's his picture. This is our founder holding a mop bucket. And one of the things that you need to know about Famous Dave, that is the founder of Wendy's, he was a high school dropout and at the age of 61 went and got his GED. And when they went to congratulate him, he said this. Don't miss this quote. He said, long before I got my GED, I got an MBA. And everybody was like, um, excuse me, Uncle Dave, that, that doesn't work because, like, you got to get a GED or high school diploma and go to college. And then you can get a master's in MBA, a master's in business administration. He's like, no, no, you misunderstand what I'm saying. He said, I got an MBA before I got a GED. And they said, so what does MBA stand for if MBA does not stand for Master's in Business Administration? He said, I call the MBA a mop bucket attitude. <laughs> mop bucket attitude. He said, so before I got a GED, I had an MBA, mop bucket attitude. And that's why his picture was him holding a mop bucket because it inspired people to go, if we're going to be like our founder, then we're never more like our founder until we begin to serve those around us. And it leads to point number four. Write this down. We see the promise of the towel. The promise of the towel. Not only the picture of the towel, the placement of the towel, the priority of the towel, and the promise of the towel. And the promise of the towel, that is, we dwell honorably. When we serve, there's honor in serving. You go ahead. That's the backwards life. There's honor in serving. There's honor in being less than. Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest, you got to be the least. So if we want to get to the top, we got to serve from the bottom. 
And so when we talk about dwell honorably, listen to verse 17. It says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Not just hear them, but do them. That's why we're talking about living local in the brochure. That's why we want to be a church not with bib mentality, but apron mentality and serve people around us. And we'll be recognized by God. Now watch this. When you and I die and go to heaven, do you know what Jesus will say to you? He will not say this to me. He will not say, well done, thy good and faithful pastor of CBC. He won't say that. I'm longing to hear the words of Jesus that will say this about me and he'll say this about you. Well done, thy good and faithful what? Servant. Servant. Why would he choose of all the things he could say about you, call you a servant? Why? Because he did that. And if we do what he did, then what we're doing is becoming the hands and feet of Jesus. When we talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus, we being the hands and feet of Jesus, serving other people, cause not only for us to be recognized by God. God says, you want to be blessed? Come on, anybody else in the room besides me want to be blessed? I want to be blessed. I want the full blessing of God. God says, there's blessing, and this is the principle, servant leadership will pay off long after that paycheck ends. Servant leadership will pay off long after that paycheck ends. Why? Because the reward of servant leadership ain't no paycheck. It's people looking at you going, listen, there's something different about you. The way you serve, the way that you care, the way that you are so thoughtful means a lot for me. And we'll find out the more that God gives us leadership or the ability to be in management or to inspire others by being thoughtful about the people that we lead instead of just bossing people around, but instead going, I'm going to set an example. I'm never going to ask you to do something I'm not going to be willing to do. Then what happens is you'll be blessed by the people that work with you and for you. And guess what they'll do? They'll go the extra mile for you. And when you do that, then what we understand, there's blessing in that. And that blessing, and I love this, verse 20 says this, Truly I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me. So when you serve people, guess what happens? It opens the door in someone's heart to receive Jesus. So what's the goal of servant leadership? So glad you asked that question, that people would see Jesus in us. And they would want to be in a relationship with Jesus. Here is the principle one more time, servant leadership will pay off long after the paycheck ends. Now, here's a couple of questions that we got to ask and answer. Question number one, do we seek to be significant or give significance? All of us in this room want to be significant. Jesus does not correct us and say it's wrong to desire to be great. He goes, hey, listen, you want to be great? Fantastic. Be great, but be great for the right reasons. Not just for yourself, but to make other people better around you. Bless people what? Bless people. So when God elevates, you try to bring as many people with you as possible. Because you'll find out that it's better to give than to receive. Now there's a typo in the notes here. It says, do we seek to serve or to be served? That's how it should read. But in my notes it says this, do we seek to be served or to be served? It actually should say, do we seek to serve or be served? If we're going to follow in the example of Jesus, we seek to serve, not to be served. Now, nothing wrong in wanting to be served. Should we do that in an attitude of gratitude? Absolutely. But we exist to serve other people. Do we seek to be seen or to see? One of the things that we always talk about here at CBC, we walk into spaces not to be seen, but to see other people. And the more we see other people, the more that we could be an answer to the question that they possibly could be asking in the depth of their soul. Do we seek to be a steward or do we seek to be selfish? Are we owners of the goodness that God's given us or are we stewards? God's looking to pour out blessing on some people that will pour out blessing to other people. And the way that we do that is through service. I'll close with this real quickly. Valentine's Day was just this past Friday. And I came across this article that's all about thoughtfulness. Servant leadership is thoughtfulness. Now listen, warning this is a incredible story that is going to create a little bit of a boohoo snot slobber moment. So just go ahead and get ready. They've been married for 45 years. 45 years. And this husband, as a servant leader to his wife, every Valentine's Day, 
would make sure there was a bouquet of yellow roses and he would always write a poem that started this way. Roses are red, violets are blue, and then he would make up something else. And he did it for 45 years, 45 years. But this husband passed away this past December, 2019, and this widowed woman with her heart broken comes into this past Valentine's Day, this past Friday, with her heart shattered into a thousand pieces that this is the first Valentine's Day without her best friend, her husband. And this is the day that the yellow roses stop until the doorbell rang. And there was a delivery of those yellow roses, tears flowing down her face, her husband's in heaven. There's no way this could have ever happened that I'm getting yellow roses on Valentine's Day. My husband has been dead for two months. She now opens the card and it's not just coincidental, once more as 45 years prior, roses are red, violets are blue, and then it says this, what a statement. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm yelling from heaven that I will always love you. (laughs) With love, your eternal Valentine. When they asked how this happened, considering he's in heaven, the day before he died of a brain tumor, he called the local florist and said, I need you to deliver some yellow roses in this poem because I don't know if I'm gonna make it to Valentine's Day. What was his servant leadership to his wife? Thoughtfulness. Being a servant leader is thoughtfulness. But as we talk about being a servant leader in Jesus, being the ultimate definition of thoughtfulness, could we hear this today as Jesus delivers to all of us the yellow roses and as we hear the doorbell ring and the presentation of the yellow roses, could we hear Jesus saying these words to us, roses are red, violets are blue, I'm yelling from heaven, I will always love you. And the definition of servant leadership in Jesus saying that I love you, he demonstrated that love with the ultimate definition of servant leadership and he went to a cross and he died to tell you how much he loved you. And that example, the more we die to our dreams, our desires, our demands, and thoughtfulness of other people around us, we're never more like Jesus until we begin to serve and be thoughtful of those around us. And with heads bowed, come on, we clap to that. Would that be all right? With heads bowed and eyes closed for just a brief moment today, if you want to receive this Jesus that loved you enough to die for you, would you be willing to call on his name today, asking Jesus to save you? I prayed this prayer when I was 15 years old, and today you can pray this prayer in faith, and Jesus will wash you from from head to toe in forgiveness. And today, if you want this Jesus, we're going to pray this prayer out loud together. And if you want to receive Jesus, would you just say this to Jesus And mean it from the depth of your heart. Say this to him. Lord Jesus, I'm not perfect, but I believe in you. Save me. Change me. I give you my life. Today, if you prayed this prayer in faith, all of heaven is celebrating your decision. And all it takes is one in the room. And I wonder if there's anybody in the room today that would say, Ed, I gave my life to Jesus today. It's legitimate. It's real. I prayed that prayer in faith for the very first time today. And it... It's true. Would you just be willing to raise your hand as tall as you can? Anybody in the room today going, Ed, I gave my life to Jesus today. As usual, we always say thank you for listening. And we just want to tell you God's word does not return void. And we would love to hear from you of how God spoke to your heart. You can email us at nextsteps at communitybible.com or visit us online at communitybible.com backslash next steps. Here's the reason why it's important you send that email. We care about names and needs at this church and we care about you. We'd love to hear your story. Send us that email and we'll celebrate it with you, pray alongside of you. But if you're in the area, man, we'd love to have you a part of one of our gatherings. But if you're outside of this area, know it's our highest encouragement to have you a part of a Bible-believing church where you could be in community. And so may we always live a life making much of Jesus in the days to come, beginning now. Until we meet again, much love.